was always dancing in the house. We, were, all my brothers were talented. My middle brother was um, a racing driver, but all the others. My eldest brother played the piano and the accordion, um, and Jack, he he sang really well. In fact, he went to our home at Wynyard to sing for one of the Wagner people. Oh. Yes, I mean it's amazing, and Don. He, he um, was in a choir and loved the piano. But I was the only one that was given the opportunity to have a career. And they helped pay for it, so they were very dear. So at what age did you start that? Because you went to Bush Davis, first of all. No, no, I went to the local dance school, okay. and Mrs Collins. And a, a student teacher from the, the um, Bush Davis School, which was at Romford, came once a week and said to my mother, she really ought to go to um, the Bush Davis School. So when I was 12, I went along there to meet Miss Davis. Miss Bush was the residential school in um, East Grinstead. Mm. Well, I didn't want to go home. I wanted to stay there. I loved it. And, but mummy was very down to earth. Now, I want to know if she has talent um, because I don't want to waste my money. <laughs> so evidently I had talent. And um, and then I had the blinkers on. It was just the ballet. I'd be in class and I was looking at the clock. And in a few hours, I'd be on that coach. And I, we danced in the lunch break. It was just heaven. Loved it. So at what point did you go from Bush Davis to the Sadler's Wells School? Oh, a lot happened before then. Um, I went into pantomime. Um, and I did, um, I did an audition at uh, the TV just for um, uh, experience. Oh, no, I went into pantomime for two, two years. The first time I was in the Corps de Ballet. And the next time, the next year, it was Cinderella. I graduated to the principal dancer. And at the end of the run, they wanted me to sign a contract for summer show. So I rang my teacher and I said, can I sign the contract? And this booming voice said, no, you're going to be a ballerina and you're going to travel the world. I went, all right, OK. <laughs> but I, I, I went to, I did this, Bill Langshaw saw me in this um, audition and asked me to do his Saturday Spectaculars. And um, so Peter Glover was in that, um, Harry Seacombe. And then I did a few other shows. And then I had an audition with the company. It was that big hall in Hammersmith above um, a Turkish coffee shop. And as I walked in, Violetta Elvin was standing there at the bar. It, I practically did a double take. She was so beautiful. Mm. And Gerd Larson came up to me and thought that I was Scan you know, um, Scandinavian because I was blonde. Um, and then I went to the school for a while. Someone was ill in the touring company and they asked me to go up. So I thought, oh, I'm going to dance, how lovely. Only to find that I was a tree in blood wedding. And I rang on in, um, in Capella Act 3 as um, a peasant girl. But I loved it. I stayed to the end of the tour. Kenneth Macmillan was still dancing. Peter Wright was still dancing. Patricia Miller. Peggy Van Prague was the director. So I went back to the school again for a very short time. And um, someone was ill in the main company, but they were doing a little tour. And I went to Oxford, and as I walked into the theatre, um, Mel Park and Shirley Graham were doing the, the, the Scotch dance in Fassard. And I stayed to the end of the tour, and then they asked me to join the company. And I soon started doing little so. They asked you to you join the main company first. To, to join the you? main company, yes. So you joined the main company in 55? 55, 55, I think yes. it was 55. But you took the decision to join the touring company in 1960, didn't you? Yes. I, I went to Madam and I said, because I wanted to dance more, I said, Madam, could I go? And she said, yes, yes. And I, I said to Harold Turner, I said, look, I've just got a new flat. In a, he said, you can always have a flat. Go and dance. Yes. And um, so I think by that time I had done, um, danced Capelia, Swan Hilda. And 
Uh, so then I did Sleeping Beauty, Swan Lake. Um, but what was so lovely is that um, Robert Heltman, he wasn't Sir then, asked me to do this television show with him, This Is Your Life, you know. So I, I did the doll in Coppelia. And um, the tango in Fassard, you know, it's quite sophisticated. And then he asked me to do the dying swan. I mean, it was on a, like the sun, width of a plank. So I'd never done the dying swan, so I just sort of and, and died. But they wiped it, you know. Maybe for the dying swan it wasn't a bad idea, but it's a shame. You know, they, they wiped a lot of films in those days. So, Doreen, yeah. you were involved in other aspects of show business right from the start, well, you weren't know, you? I always loved Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers and all those, you know, Ann Miller, Eleanor Powell. And, of course, you know, my grandfather, he, he was um, on the musical stage. Yes. And um, his uh, stage name was Fred Egan. And his slogan was... He can sing, he can dance, he can do almost anything, he can. But he wouldn't let my father go on the stage because it was such a hard life. But Daddy often did a little tap step, you know, when he was happy. And Mummy loved dancing, and that's how she, she sent me to the and local so, dance school. And so, in, really, in no time at all, you were the ballerina of the touring company, yes, weren't you? Yes, with um, Christopher Gable. He was my main partner. Ah. And then he went into films because um, he had trouble with his feet, his joint, you know. But he was a wonderful partner. I've been very lucky yes. with my partners. Yeah. Oh, yes. um, with, with, and David Wall, you know, and yes. they're both very good actors. So you could really believe um, when you were... Um, in. So you had these two partnerships with, with, with Gable and with Wall. Yes. But you, I often but... danced with Donald McCleary. Yes. In fact, we made films when I was retiring. We, we made um, Romeo and Juliet, Sleeping Beauty, and Sylvia in, in the valley. Yes. Now, it was very hot. And we had to walk through the... Um, oh, I, I, I'll tell you before this. I only had one rehearsal in London with Donald, and the next minute we're in front of the cameras. So he, he comes a bit late, takes one leap onto the stage and goes through it, so we have to mend it. And then he didn't have any pants because it's bare legs, so I cut a pair of my dance skins off. <laughs> and so we're walking through the, the, all the thistles and everything to, to the, the little bridge, you know, we meet by the bridge. And we kind of get the giggles. And then the first, uh, I must say here, when I think of that, I see Margot Fontaine. I don't think anyone's got that uh, line, that beautiful line, even myself. I'm, you know, they're either leaning there or leaning back. But it was just pure beauty. There was a rehearsal at Covent Garden, um, at the rehearsal in Barons Court. And it was one of those magic moments. You could almost hear a pin drop. The beauty of it and the musicality. You know, da 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 It was so beautiful. Anyway, so we're, we're coming on. I think we do about 14 takes. On the 13th, Mummy's coming through the trees. <laughs> <laughs> and as we had very little rehearsal, there was one part where I'm coming down and he thinks I'm going up, so he's lifting a dead weight. But we, we didn't stop. And, um, and then we did Romeo and Juliet mm -hmm. there. And of course, we've got this very um, the statue gallery, and it's a, a stone floor that we had to dance on. And the balcony is way, way up. And so I, I've got vertigo. And, so, so, and then he forgot the, the cloak. So we took a velvet, a red velvet curtain down for that. Um, and we used to have parties. We used to put on shows. And I had Makarova come up, um, Monica Mason, all, all the stars, David Wall. And we did these, these performances. I think we did about three. And afterwards, 
uh, we'd have, they'd all eat. And uh, so they said, company, leave, don't, don't, let, let the guest go because you know what dancers are then. <laughs> and Donald would keep us so entertained. He's got such a dry wit. So we laughed uh, all night practically. It, it was such fun. And I'm, I'm sort of dashing around from one thing to another. <laughs> but we were, we were talking about the touring company. Yes. And tell me about touring, because you toured everywhere, didn't you? Yes. Um, well, I, I loved getting into a theatre, oh, putting, making the, your uh, table look nice, and then packing up. And with John Healy, we used to go in the car and stop at pubs and have lunch, and we'd all sing, sing something simple, you know. And uh, it was lovely. I enjoyed it. Um, but conditions were pretty primitive in those days. You know, it was amazing how we, sometimes when we were rehearsing in halls, you know, slippery floors, sometimes no bars to hang on to. And No, they were very difficult, but then you had these wonderful ballads that Kenneth, um, you know, uh, I took over most of Marion Lane's roles. But he did all these lovely ballets, House of Birds, um, Noctambules, Dance Contretemps, which I just loved. You know, um, and if I give a master class, I give that solo. Because, you know, you've got to use your epaulement. It's very chic, it's sexy, yes. and, and a touch of um, Zizi Jean Mer. And uh, but what I loved about Kenneth, um, he had this dramatic side, you know, very much, you know, true life sort of thing. But he did the most heavenly things, like um, uh, concerto, Shostakovich, mm -hmm. second piano concerto, and I did the slow movement. But I loved those rehearsals, you know, the dum da dum da dum bum bum. But that slow movement, sheer heaven, I just see it all on a level, you know, like velvet. You've got the orange sun at the back, and it's just beautiful. Mm. That's one of my favourite things. The theatres, you went to so many theatres. What were your favourite theatres to tour to? Well, the first one that comes into mind is the Leeds Theatre. You know, you've got those boxes that are practically on the stage, and yes. you really felt you could contact with the audience. This is the Grand Theatre in Leeds? Yes, yes. It's a very intimate theatre, yes. Yes. And some of the digs are pretty awful, but Dolly Parrish, she was well known. She didn't really like Ladies' Day because powder and all that, but she, she loved me. And we had, I think there was Adrian Grater and um, oh, a whole lot of um, Patruan. And it was really nice, you know. Uh, so what was special about Dolly Parrish in Leeds? Oh, she was a great character. Yes. Oh, that reminds me of, there was another place we stayed. And um, we got food poisoning. And I was about to do Sleeping Beauty. And I, I made up not feeling very good. And I realised I couldn't go on. So Betty Anderton went on for me. And then Fidge Ferris, um, she was doing the Bluebird and was sick. <laughs> so, and I think it was the butter was off or something. But um, other theatres, um, Oxford I liked. That's a big theatre, isn't it, Oxford? Yes, but I loved the feeling in Oxford. Yes. And, and Cambridge was, was small, but it, that, that was lovely. Um, were there any nightmare dicks? Oh, yes, there was one. I mean, the bath was so awful, you wouldn't put your big toe in it. And uh, they stayed at one place where the sheets were sort of um, nylon and damp. Oh! Um, but there were a lot of damp places in those days, weren't there? They, well, England is a damp place. Yes. <laughs> yes. But d did you ever stay in hotels, nice hotels? Um, where did you stay in Bournemouth, for instance? Oh, I did stay in a hotel. Uh, Bournemouth was lovely. Mm -hmm. um, 
No, I, I enjoyed Bournemouth and Eastbourne. I'm just trying to think of all the places. Yes, I stayed in a hotel in Bournemouth. At that lovely big one, I can't remember. The Royal me. Bath. Yes. That's very nice. And um, where else? But you didn't just tour in the UK, you toured oh, abroad. Oh, toured. You know, I danced in um, by the side of the Sphinx, Swan Lake. You know, you had the sand and you had the bats and you, you could see the, the camels and their owners on the skyline. As I was leading the company, I did everything in my room. It was the Mina House Hotel. It must have been wonderful at one time because, you know, the Grand Tour used to be there, all the stars went there. And you could see the pyramids um, from, from the window. And so I did my class there. I warmed up. I made up. And because they put all the principles underneath the stage in a tiny, tiny room. So, you know, you just put your costume on and got out. <laughs> and, uh, no, that was very exciting. And, of course, we danced in ball, ring, ball, ball rings. Mm -hmm. And the dressing rooms would be underneath. And um, where else? Or oh, in the Philippines. That was um, exciting. That's a different kind of heat, isn't it? Yes, yes. Pretty oh, and Baalbek. Baalbek, those ruins. Fantastic. Yes. Absolutely fantastic. And, of course, you had the... Um, sometimes you had to have oxygen. I was a blue girl in... Um, Patina. Patina. Mm -hmm. And the music they played beforehand was so exciting. So that was, that was um, a lovely experience, but the heat, I was hopeless in the heat. Who were you dancing with on these tours? Because you started off with Christopher Gable, but then you formed a really important partnership. With David, with David, David yes. Moore, yes. I think it was with David. Tell me about your relationship with David, because what was well, your was natural so fit? Well, it was easy to dance. Yes. Um, and he was such a lovely actor. You, 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 it was just so natural to do Romeo and Juliet with him. And, um, and he was a wonderful partner. Yes, Margaret said he was the best partner she ever had. Yes, he really was. Really. So he was strong, wasn't he? Yes. Mm. Well, I think he had to be when he did Myling. But uh, something came into my mind. That, oh, I did... Um, no, it wasn't with David. It was with Christopher Gable. Swan Lake in Paris at the Champs Elysees, and Fred, he, he said, um, "Now, smell your armpits." You know, he loved all this. He pulled on. I thought that was lovely. He was wonderful to work with. You worked with Fred on. He created a role for you, didn't he, in Sinfonietta? Sinfonietta and. Um, Prometheus. Oh, it was lovely working with Fred because he would let you dance yes. and you'd keep that in. And for um, Ondine, I was one of the Pardisees in the last act, he said, do a cha-cha step and then change it. So I went, dee dum bum ba bum pirouette, dee dum bum ba bum pirouette. So it, was, it was lovely. So when he, when he made Sinfonietta, were you on tour when he made it? No, it was in London. It was, it was for London. But at the rehearsals, I was pulled inside out, you know, it was a sort of wafting. I loved wafting around, you know, to dream. I love slow things. Being small, they think you like to do quick. I love doing quick pirouettes, but I love da dum, da dum, you know, things like that. Where was I? Oh, yes, um, Sinfonietta. Well, there's a part where the men throw me to Richard uh, Farley and he catches me, you know, like it's a fish, when I went over the top and landed just that much off the floor <laughs> and Fred went white. So we did keep that part in. And I used to go to saunas afterwards. Sometimes you sang on stage, didn't I you? Know. <laughs> yes, just... I did. <laughs> yes, I, I was musical. And um, so I could really learn a ballet very quickly and go on um, because of the music. I mean, I loved uh, Dance Concertant, but you really had to get used to Stravinsky. But once you did, I loved it. Yes. You see, 
what they need to do now is get the essence of those wonderful choreographers. You didn't realize at the time that you were dancing with, working with geniuses. Yes. Now, now you can see it. You were a wonderful Lise in Fee. Was I? Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, oh. you were a wonderful Lise in thank Fee. Thank you. But what was some, um, did you think that was a part that was made for, that you, you felt comfortable with? I felt very comfortable, but you know, I'm a tear out tear dancer and I don't really like leaving the floor, <laughs> but you know, I did. In fact, I did Sylvia. No, I, I loved Fee and I think it was so brilliant, you know, the clog dance. But I think it's very important that these ballets are given energy, you know, um, take the the the, um, the corn, you know. There's a, if you go, di da da da, you've really got to go, di da da yum. It's got to have energy. The reaper's dance has to, to have yes, yes, very articulated torso. And also, sense. you know, the, the trumpeters in Sylvia, it's really got to be, dum da da dum dum da, and then you've. It means something. Yes. Otherwise, it just you know, sort of. No matter how wonderful the choreography, it's got to have that. Yes. And stillness. This is what Margot had. I believe that when she first went to Covent Garden, Sir Fred said, "You're not coming over," and then she did this stillness. You know, she was such a, a great person to have. She was a lesson just to, to watch her. You know, she'd come into class. She wouldn't warm up. She'd just go straight to the bar. Perfect turnout, and and in um, symphonic variations, she would just stand there, but she had that presence, and her um, Rosa d'Argio sparkled. She'd make two pirouettes sparkle, you know. Um, da -di -da -da -dum -da -yum. Da -yum. And the balances, you know, there was this not a circus act, but it was that. It was so exciting. You once told me that Margot's Rosadage was the most exciting you'd ever seen, but she did all through musicality. Musicality, absolutely. You know, if you do three pirouettes, but those two pirouettes that sparkled. You know. Yes, that's something to say. Yes, and the line, that beautiful line. So you didn't think that you were a naturalist, maybe because there's so much jumping in it, being a terror toe dancer. Yes. But it was just that da 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 Well I didn't like doing those things so I did Shelly da 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 and I think Fred I, I didn't ask Fred if I could change it. And Michael Sims told him that he said, I hear you change and I, But I thought it actually was much nicer than the da 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 no, if the music was right, then I could jump. It was like Sylvia. I love Sylvia, really for a tall person in a way. But that music, and if the tempi was right, I loved it. Now, it's interesting you say that about Ashton Sylvia. Um, it being more suitable for a tall dancer, but Margot wasn't tall. No, but I was smaller than Margot. <laughs> yes. And she looked so beautiful in the costume. They, those costumes, that tutu was lovely. Yes. Lovely. And of course, another ballet that we associate very much with you, Doreen, is The Two Pigeons. Oh, I love it. The last part of her. Yes. So beautiful. Yeah, no, that, that was one of my favourites. So did Fred rehearse you in Two Pigeons, or was it...? You know I can't remember. I did it on television, and I've got that film. Um, you did that with Christopher Gable? Christopher Gable. No, no, with, with uh, David. With, with David, OK. Yes, yes. don't think I ever did. I did it with Paul Clark and Kevin... can't remember his name. Was it Carison Cook? Carison Cook. Mm -hmm. Carison Cook, yes. It was interesting that... Um, David was the first English dancer I ever saw who used to do one-arm lifts. I'd never seen an English dancer do a one-arm lift before. Yes. 
and yet he used to do those quite spectacularly. Yes. Oh, no, he was, he was a brilliant part. In fact, I think he should have become a sir, you know. I think a lot of people would agree with you on that. Yes. You know, the way he, admiring, he was a wonder, wonderful actor. Partner, yes. But, you, but did you share musicality? I mean, you were always a very musical dancer, but it, you... We uh, just sort of, it was like one. Yes. You know, and that's the best you can be. I, I never forget I had to go on for Antoinette or... No. Um... Uh, what was his name? Anthony Dow partnered me. And I remember he sort of lifted me on the pirouettes and I couldn't, couldn't do it. I didn't like very much help. You know, I hate it when you see, yes. see this going on. Yes. And I do like to see fast pirouettes, you know, even in the fairy, you know. Dee da dum, dee da, dee da 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 da. Doreen, in 1964, you created the role of Raimonda with Rudolf Nureyev at the Spoleto Festival. Yes. But that happened in quite unusual circumstances, didn't it? It was amazing. You know, I was a friend of um, Margot, who was Raimonda, one of her friends. And come the open dress rehearsal, with the public in, in the audience, I mean, in the, the seats, and Rudolph comes to me and says, you've got to go on for Margot. Um, because her husband had just been shot and she had to go to London. So I quickly put a tutu on. And then we went on stage and we stopped and we started, you know, showing me how to do things. And so it was very exciting. And then when it finished, we stayed in the theatre and they brought in drinks and food. And we worked and we worked. And... Um, then uh, come the performance. I had lots and lots of bouquet. Oh no, that's afterwards. Anyway, I had lots of cards from other artists saying how brave I was. Well, I, there wasn't time to be nervous. I just had to keep my wits about me. And so the performance went well, and Noel Coward came round to see me. That lovely Noel Coward. And in the papers, it said, um, The Miracle of Spoleto. So the Pope heard about this and, and uh, said he would like to meet the miracle of Spoleto. And so we went, uh, John Field and Birdie last, we went to Rome. Just tell me, you went to Rome to meet the Pope? Yes. You actually met the Pope? Well, I tell you, I get claustrophobia. And we got in there and I've never seen anything like it. It was like a football match. Loads of people clicking and clicking and the Pope was sort of down there. So I had to leave, but I, so that's why I went on to something else, because when I didn't okay. actually meet him, went all the way to Rome. <laughs> so the Pope didn't meet the, no, the miracle no. of Spoleto. <laughs> but I, I was, um, uh, when I did Charlie Girl, the artistic director, um, Michael Fields, um, he went to Italy, and he rang me many years later, and he said, look, I'm thinking of doing a show in Spoleto, and do you know you're still on the website as the Miracle of Spoleto? And I said, well, why don't we do something like the Miracle of Spoleto um, returns? <laughs> but it didn't come to anything. Yes. But, you know, ten years after the centenary, there were lots of tributes at Covent Garden and the film festival, uh, the National Film Festival, and they rang me and said, would you say a few words? Because there's a film of you... I didn't know there was a film, because I, I don't think the tutu was done up properly in the back. And I did it on half point, a lot of it, because I, I had these terribly bruised toenails, so I was saving myself. Um, but it was interesting, you know. A lot of people found Rudy very difficult, but I never found Rudy difficult. No, Just he, intelligence he could and, be sweet yes. and so helpful, I yes. mean, because he was totally dedicated. Yes. But before the show went up, he'd keep the curtain waiting because he did over and over again. He worked and worked. Evidently, I think he liked to get a bit tired because um, he, he worked better that way. So I, I said to, um, when I was asked to say a few words, I, I said to Alan Seavright, they've asked me to say a few words, you know, about Muriel. He said, well, have I got something for you to say? 
evidently Nuri Hoff was still nervous and needed the choreography out of Russia, Petipa's choreography, and he was still sort of looking over his shoulder. So Alan knew a, a Canadian dancer who, who was in the school, and he went to Pushkin, and the Petipa's choreography was taken out of Russia in his firm, thermos flask and brought to Alan's flat. And so that's all the 007 stuff, you know. Gosh. Isn't that good? That's amazing. Yes. But how did you find Rudy as a partner? after? Because Christopher Gable oh. was a very good partner and David was an amazing partner. So I found him fine, except we did it in London. And... Um, he didn't help me very much. Not that I like a lot of help, as long as I'm not pulled off balance. Yes. And he apologised afterwards. He apologized. But there was, he was naughty once. He said, now I want you to take a few steps and jump into my arms. I jumped and landed on the floor. He said, I thought you were marking it. <laughs> he could be so naughty. <laughs> but it, there was, um, no, as you can see in that picture, the way he's looking at me is, is it's yes. sweet. Yes. It, it's, yes. It's nice. Yes, he could be. He, yes, he could be very, very kind. But you know, yes. um, they were saying, "Oh, I don't think Nureyev would be um, uh, so famous now." But what they forget is that he had charisma. Yes. You know, when he came on um, in Marguerite and Armand with that cloak, and then he picked her up. I mean, it was. Yes. He had this, he was a star. Yes. And I think I love stars. Yes. You know? No, he had charisma. He would still be something. Yes, star, star power. Yes, and presence. Is for, yes, it's a Presence, you just stand there and, you know. I remember I read somewhere that Margot thought, well, I better go and help you. He just was going to have an interview. Absolutely fine, you know, Margot. You danced Swan Lake quite a lot, didn't you? Well, and quite a lot on tour, because uh, there yes. was a time when I think I did three in a row, you know, because Beryl couldn't come up. Yes. But, um, no, I, yes, I... I saw you in Swan Lake in the mid-60s. In fact, yes. you and David dancing Swan Lake gave me my... Love of dance, actually. That's Isn't what's that lovely, Mike? I love that. When you start said of the whole that. thing off. It made me feel really, really, really lovely. Um, but it's it's a difficult role because are you more more of an Odette or an Odile, or did you find them both very satisfying? I loved the the, the um, Odette. Yes. And I liked Odile. I think I would I would do everything much better now. I really have more passion. They say the youth is wasted on the young, <laughs> but um, no, no, I, I did, I loved the part of those. And I had a lovely crit from, I think it was Dickie Buckle who said, it looked as though I was orchestrating Tchaikovsky, you know. It was Tchaikovsky, wasn't it? That's a wonderful yeah. line. And, and I thought that was such a, a lovely compliment. Yes. Of oh, but you know what was very funny? Um, I always had a problem with point shoes. And so, after my solo, there's the coda, and I would change, cut the ribbon off, my, the left shoe, and put another shoe on, and they'd be saying, will she make it? Won't she make it? So I'd run on and go, da 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 So you literally change your shoes in that, but during... In that coda. The male cell. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's life in the fast lane, I, I had... Fairly good nerves, you know. And, and there was another funny... Oh, can I go on to something else? It was um, Ballet Imperial. And um, I hadn't put the shoe on, and I just got it tied up, and it went... Dee -da. Well, you know, it helped me, because I was so up. Dee -da 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 -da, you know, that entrance. <laughs> if you turn back the clock and dance in any ballet with any partner again, what would it be? You know, it, um, the first thing that comes to my mind is the slow movement in um, Shostakovich. 
Dancing with who? Ginger. With David, yes. Yes. Um, turn the clock. Or oh, Sylvia. Yes, Sylvia. I, what I loved about Margot is the command she had of the stage. Yes. She'd stand there at the side. And evidently, I think, um, Robert Helpman would outdo her, so she really had to work hard, and that was very good training. You yes, know. Yes. She had uh, good training because he would upstage if he would, he was naughty. And, uh, would it help more upstage anybody again? Yes. <laughs> oh, he and Fred in, in The Ugly Sisters, that was wonderful. <laughs> I think he, he teased um, Ashton in real life, I don't know, you know. but they were wonderful, wonderful. That wonderful chemistry. Yes. So, who would you, who would your partner be for Sylvia, if you could dance it again? Well, David. 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 Again. Oh, and I did it with um, Attilio Lavis. That was lovely. And then yes. I did it again um, with uh, Patrice Bart in in Paris. And um, no, I. I really, I, I love that music. Da -dum, da -da -dum, da -dum. Mm. Does Tchaikovsky love that music? He, th he thought Sylvia was the perfect ballet score. It's, Delib? Yes. Mm. He thought Delib was the, 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 the best mm. ballet composer. Really? I yes. didn't know that. Yes. But you know that music, you couldn't help but get off the floor. Yes. And then, um, and the second act, dum. Ta -da, bum, bum. Yeah. Lovely. So you retired in 1974 from the Royal Ballet. Yes. And immediately I was asked to go to Rio to do the Nutcracker with Cyril Atanasov. And so I didn't retire. And then the Royal Ballet asked me back. Um, and then I, I did the Nutcracker with Beryl. She was... Um, the director of the festival, and also um, the City Ballet. Um, London City. L London City Ballet, and um, I did guest performances. And then I had this lovely, um, a real gentleman of the theatre, Richard Shulman, and he was manager of the Shaftesbury Theatre, and they were putting on Aladdin, and Karen Kane had the uh, Canadian ballerina had done the genie. So I did the genie. And Derek Griffiths was the master. Well, he tried to make me laugh all the way through. <laughs> and I had this sort of, it looked like an upside down lavatory brush. It was up and it looked like that. And so I got my own back right at the end of the show. You know, it was the afternoon. Uh, he comes towards me and I'm like, I said, oh, master. So I had one of these party things, you know, that go, you blow it and it goes, Woo! and he went, <laughs> and the manager said, that was great, you know, because you can play around like that. And so while I was in that, um, one of the cast said, look, on your toes is coming to London, and it would be a wonderful part for you. So I, I went and auditioned for it. I had the book, because I wouldn't be able to just act and read at the same time, so... I really felt it, you know, and so I got it. And I went in, I, I took over from um, and but I actually did all the rehearsals. 
um, and that lovely man, um, Abbott, George Abbott. George Abbott. Oh, I mean, he was in his 90s, but he was so attractive. Mm. And, well, that, I mean, I was in my seventh heaven, Slaughter on 10th Avenue. Uh, just loved it. Because, I, you know, um, I loved tap dancing. I took after my grandfather. And um, so that was it. And the costumes were just Hollywood. Beautiful costumes. Um, it was a show that really showed off your versatility. Yes, and I had to be Russian. Yes. Oh. Russian accent, you know. ballet, tap. When did you, did you learn tap as a child? At the Bush Davis School, I did everything. You did everything, right. Yes. And uh, I think that's where I learned it, Paul Moore. And, you know, it's very important, the stops. Um, so, you know, that's where I learned tap dancing. And so you got to do both in On Your Toes? Well, I, I didn't. I, I actually put tap shoes on and tapped off. You know, I put that on myself, because <laughs> there wasn't any tapping. But, oh, Slaughter on 10th Avenue, that was fantastic. Oh, I loved it. And there was one day, it was very, very hot, so I went to the stage door, and I came back on stage, and I have to say a few lines off stage. Well, I heard Tim Flavin saying them. <laughs> and when I was in that show, Harold Fielding um, came to see me and asked me to do a Charlie Girl to take over from Sid Charisse. And, well, that was a lovely show. And there again, beautiful costumes. And I suppose I was in that for nearly a year, the, um, in London and then in Manchester for three months and Birmingham for three months. Well, come the almost the last performance, and Joe Layden, who did a Grand Tour for, for us, I was Mary Pickford, and you know you had... Douglas Fairbanks and Gertrude Stein and Noel Coward. Anyway, uh, and he put that ballet on. And he was coming to the evening performance and taking myself out uh, with Bonnie Langford for dinner afterwards with Harold Fielding, the, the producer. <coughs> well, I had a dream Friday night. It was a wonderful dream, and I thought, everything's going to go so well. Huh. So the afternoon performance, I have to say to Paul Nicholas, Never admit, your, never admit defeat, never admit your beat. And I said, never admit your feet. Well, red rag to a board, he corpsed, I corpsed. We tried to start again. So I went to the front and I said, Maestro, can we go back from Diddy Dum Bom Bom? And so I came off and Bonnie said, that was great, though. So I think I got overconfident. So come the evening performance, I, I've got this um, estate no money, so I turn it into a fairground. And my friend Dora Bryan has got this lovely um, son, Mark Winter, who I want my daughter. I've got two tall daughters, and I want married off. So, um, where was I? Oh, so, um, I do the rounds. I'm on my bicycle, I come off, and I get off the bicycle, and I go up to the girls. What you girls? And I forget my line. I've only been in the show all this time. I've got Joe Layton and Harold Fielding out front. What am I going to do? It's the most awful. What do I do? So I said, watch you girls. I think I said it three times. And the young man next to me gave me the lead in. Well, for the rest of the show, I don't know what comes next. It was the worst show I've ever done. Not only that, I had this little couture dress, black. You know, a little hat, really beautiful, thinking we're going somewhere like the Ritz. Well, we go to a cafe. I'm so overdressed. <laughs> and I should have said you know, that you know, that was the worst show I've done. I forgot my lines. I'm dressed up to the nines, but I didn't say. I just said, well, I forgot my lines. But now I, I, would, um, I would say to you, what the, I forgot my lines. Can anyone help? You know, you, I remember there was this uh, actress. She forgot her lines, so she went to the sign. She said, uh, I, uh, what comes next? <laughs> you know, it was just so natural. <laughs> I mean, if I'd been dancing, I would have carried on dancing, but my mind went blank. I'd never forget that horrible feeling. But um, you never suffer from stage fright, have you? Oh, well, yes. I think the older you get, the more you see that could go wrong. And sometimes, 
um, especially if I'm going to um, make a speech, you know, like walk on um, the Albert Hall in front of all those people and say a few words, you know. It's like going to the electric chair, but there's only one way to go. You've got to go. But I was going to say something else. Ah. And then I did 42nd Street. What was funny? Oh, 42nd Street. And I'd, again, I'd, learnt, I'd had the book, and I learned the singing of a, a cassette. And I just loved it. I really felt in it, you know. Don't say another word. Oh, Mr. March. And, but then when it came to the singing, in the shadows when I come and sing to you, well, it was in the shadows. I, I couldn't get down there. <laughs> and um, it was David Merrick, and he's, he couldn't, because he'd had a stroke, I want you on stage. He, he liked, but, but I couldn't. But I did go in. I did go on. And the most unlikely role you'd ever imagine, um, the songwriter, Ethel Merman, Yes. Come on along and listen to. <laughs> well, once you've got the wig on, you never know what you can do. So yes. I, I did that. Yeah. How long were you in 42nd Street for? Um, not very long. But you had long runs in Charlie Girl and... Yes, uh, yes. On Your Toes. And on Your Toes. I never minded when things came to the end because it's a, a totally different formation. You know, when you're in the ballet, you're always rehearsing um, different things. You're always in class. But once the show is on, that's it. Yes. You know? And, uh, no, it was, I loved it. Loved it. But I was happy when it came to an end, you know. The same thing every night. Yes. <laughs> and so, since those big shows, you, you've done charity, Work oh, you've... I love the charity, yes. um, because uh, her, um, I never like to say anything, you know. But then I started talking of, talking about my career and life, and then it was Alan Seafright that said um, he a patron to the um, Purcell School mm -hmm. and fundraiser. So I'd only got like a thousand pounds or something like that. So I was given the. Um, Arts Club in Dover Street. It was actually my birthday, and, uh, but I dedicated it to the Purcell School, and everything flowed. You know, um, I wanted a navy long dress, so I went to Franco, and I said, I want a navy, she said. So she brought out this, see that, yes. that dress, chaparelli pink, but it wasn't on the mauve side, and she was wonderful with colours, you know, mm. they lived. So I, I wouldn't have chosen that in a million years. And then I'd walk out into a chaparelli pink taxi. And then some people sent me a presence wrapped in chaparelli. I mean, they didn't know. Yes. So it was one of those times where you, you flowed with the universe. And then, um, I don't really like committee meetings, but uh, so arranging the tables. I'd sit by my French windows and, and the, the fountain going, and I made all the different tables, like uh, a flute, a violin, and I had about 120 people. Um, and I did all the tables, and I enjoyed it. I, I had um, old photographs that I had framed, and Michael Buckingham was the auctioneer, and I had the Purcell perform. And the wonderful tap dancer from the BBO, can't remember, he danced. I mean, was so nonchalant. It was great. And his, um, and his students. And then I had opera singers. And it just went wonderfully. And I did several of those. I did one for the um, London Children's Ballet. But they closed, they, they turned it into a nightclub. And <clears throat> So then I went to the um, Guards Club, and, and you, you were with me, Mike. Cavalry and Guards Club, yes. Cavalry and Guards Club. Yes. And, but I used to really enjoy that. It wasn't an effort, I, I just went. But you had a real talent for organising those well, charity never, events. Yeah, because I, um, I, I just, it just flowed, it just happened. 
you know, if, if you have to work hard at it, it, it somehow... Well, I did work, but I enjoyed it. Yes. And then, you know, in, in the in the 90s, um, I started to learn poetry, uh, read poetry. It was Martin Starkey, he was the uh, director of the Chaucer place in um, uh, Canterbury. And so he asked me to to um, the prioress, there also was a prioress, you know. And I didn't know how much I liked poetry. I loved it. So I'm in the Suffolk Cathedral and I, I'm just, I'm a little bit nervous. And in walks this very resplendent lady in her, you know, more royal than royalty. And she looks at me and she says, further back from the mic, dear, further back. And I think, oh God. This is not going to go well. So I go down, and then when it comes to it, I go up and I bow and I open the book and I look at everyone and I say. And as I walk down, she goes. <laughs> and so I thought, lovely. And we became firm friends, Countess Sempelli. We used to don our hats and go to the Ritz, and you know, she'd talk to the maitre d' and then stand at the door. All the people would look round and she would, you know, wonderful lady. <clears throat> And then um, I did the choreography um, for the 60th anniversary of Chaucer um, in Canterbury. So um, I used to go to one school, maybe South End, and teach the girls that, and then go into another place, not in London, teach the boys. And uh, I absolutely loved it. I did part of it, like um, a helpman doing the the uh, children catcher, you know. And so I really enjoyed it. I'm not a choreographer, but it, it went quite well. So that was an experience. So Doreen was choreographer, finally. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I must have said something, and I saw my uh, name in uh, Doreen Wells doing the chore choreography, and I thought, well, well, I've got to do it. <laughs> As I say, you never know what you can do until you try. Some have greatness thrust upon them. 